for Rotary District 5110. <laughs> so Monday, group dynamics. So this is when we all got off the bus. Um, it was really intimidating. There was a lot of screaming involved. By the end of camp, I did not have a voice for several days. Um, so everybody's looking pretty scared, as you can see. They're like, what's going on? Outside of the bus, right outside the door, we had a tunnel of counselors, assistant counselors, vegetarians, screaming their head off, <laughs> jumping up and down, going, get off the bus, get off the bus, and just hands in the air. And they're like, what? It was, it was crazy. You go on the next slide. <laughs> it was pretty intimidating. And you can just slide, there's a couple of pictures. Um, there's a really good one of Savannah. Oh, here. it's an attractive one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right there. <laughs> some, some were like, get away from me. Some were like, oh, I can dig this. And then others were like, I'm just going to awkwardly walk through. <laughs> Um, and then as soon as we got up, we did an icebreaker, we, which was a bingo, but what was it called? It was a certain kind of bingo. Um, it was like where we, um, we, you, you asked like people. Four, like four, the pavement was like split into four groups, and then she's like, just asked you like, oh, if your favorite dog's a cat, go over there. Check dog. out that bingo. And then so then like you went in those four sections, and then you kind of just talked and kind of started making friends. Yeah, and just basically so you aren't stuck in your little group. Um, and then we went to the pavilion and we <coughs> talked about forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. So we talked about forming a group, which is when a group just comes together, like let's say Ten people go out on a, on a field, there's a soccer ball, they're sort of just standing around, and then, hey, let's play a soccer game. That's forming. And then we have storming. Now the group's starting to, okay, what position should I play? Should I be the team captain, and should I lead this team to glory? Or should I be a guard in the back? I don't really know soccer that well. Um, <laughs> probably not the best example. But it, basically, it's everybody trying to find their spot in that group. And so the group that can start norming. And so the norm is, let's say the norm is everyone should open the door for everyone automatically. It's just automatic. So that's norming. When you find those little mannerisms that are just there. Um, and then performing, which is when everybody finds their spot in the group and everybody starts working efficiently, and you can get your job done with a decent amount of time and with everybody happy. No more storming or fighting or difficulty. And then a journey. This is when all the team members, this is what we did at the end of camp, um, when all the team members leave and they go off in their different directions. Um, it's also going to happen during high school graduation this year for the seniors. And, um, and there, was also, uh, there was also one in our town there that's called swarming, where like you kind of just get it, like if you use like a social network, and you can kind of just get mobs of people like to come together, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so, what we did today. Swarming, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> and so, on this day, we finally got to meet our species group, which is I was an owl. You were. What were you? Species. Oh, oh, um, oh gosh. You were bullfrogs. No, no. no. Eagles. No. I was a bullfrog. 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 And I was a coyote. Coyote. <laughs> so, you can go to the next slide. No, All right. Surprise. So. The counselors got up and they represented their species group by doing a sort of charade, so we sort of had to guess. And then afterwards we got assigned to our a counselor and an assistant counselor. And yeah. And then as we got together with our groups, we made our norms. We introduced everybody, we played a name game. Um, and we just basically sort of like, okay, this is who we're living with for this week. Better get to know them. I'm like, oh no. Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> That's a typo. Extra wise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, communication and conflict. 
All right. So Tuesday, each day we would learn about a different topic, I guess. So Tuesdays was communication, all about active listening. So we learned about if you are talking to somebody and they are making like direct eye contact, or, you know, they're like fiddling like with their shirt, or they just, you know, aren't, you know, paying attention to you, you automatically feel like the urge to not talk to them. So we learned um, different things that we can do to uh, become better active listeners to um, basically help people to want to talk to us because that's what we want to do, be able to communicate with everybody in our you know, interact group and everybody in our species group. And in active listening, you know, it's interrupting so and also assuming how you think that their sentence will end. So just all you aren't really listening inside of your head if you're automatically thinking like, oh well, they're just gonna say this, and then you interrupt them. Like that's that is not good active listening at all. So you should just say, like, act, just say, always like listen to them, you know, and don't interrupt. And if you say yeah, but it kind of makes you sound like you are disagreeing with them and so that also doesn't encourage them to continue to talk to them. You want to be like, yes, but also I, you know, and then you'll just continue on. Um, so here is where we learned about kind of where we fall. There is competition. You are very assertive. You don't really cooperate with that many people. Like you just want to automatically take charge and win and be superior to everybody else. And then the collaboration is high assertive and high cooperative, which is very good. You want to take charge, but you also are willing to you know, bring everyone else in and listen to them. And then we have compromising, which is you just, you know, you give an idea and someone gives an idea back. So you're just, you're staying on like the same level as everybody else. And then avoiding is low assertive and low cooperation. So you just, you don't want to, you don't want any conflicts. So you don't talk to people and communicate like your thoughts or opinions. And we have accommodating, which is low assertive and high cooperative, which can be good, but you don't always want to just follow somebody else's lead. You also want to give your opinion and not just be led around. So you can see how it goes from low cooperative cooperativeness to high cooperativeness and to low assertiveness to high. So we all agreed that, or I think most of us agreed that, like collaboration is pretty good, taking charge, but also listening to other people. Competition. <laughs> Competition. <laughs> so we had three challenge activities, search and rescue. Um, I believe there are going to be pictures of each of these. So search and rescue. We were all, um, most of us were blindfolded and we had to hold a string like around a circle and we had to hook this tiny little wooden airplane through this really tiny hook and try to lift it up into the air while we're all blindfolded and only one person was talking. So you really had to use your communication skills that we had learned that morning to, to either take charge or to back off and to listen. And then we had agencies of active listening and communication breakdown. Um, this is, I believe, yes, this is communication breakdown where one partner was told to just be writing stuff down that the first um, partner was saying, but we weren't we weren't making eye contact with them and we weren't contributing to the conversation at all. So the first person's telling you about a story like that. My partner, was, she went to Disneyland. And the whole time, I was just writing down words that she said that started with either A, B, or C. So I, I can't not look at people. So this was very challenging for me when she was trying to talk to me and I couldn't make eye contact with her or look at her or you're supposed to kind of look around. So she, your first partner, would kind of just drift off and wouldn't finish her statement because you aren't listening to somebody. They aren't encouraged to continue on the conversation. They just feel like you don't care, you know, you don't want to participate. So. And on the other side of that, I was the person telling the story. <laughs> and I had a goofy story. 
Like it was about Obi Wan Kenobi, a blue bear that had a lightsaber. I mean, it was weird, and I didn't get one single laugh. It was just okay. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this was which one was this? Oh, the is the like helium oh. stick. It's not really full of helium because it's just a metal rod, but you. Everyone went like this, all your, your species group put their fingers together and we laid a rod across like our bridge of fingers and we had to slowly drop it down to the ground but all of our fingers had to constantly be touching the rod. That was very challenging. No species group um, has ever accomplished that, apparently in Ryleth history. So, it tests your, um, your patience because, you know, Everyone is going at different rates, and even if you say go really slow, somebody will always you know, go faster than somebody else. It's just, it's almost, it's almost impossible to, yeah, or somebody will raise it just automatically, <laughs> or that's why it's called the floating stick, because we'd just be sitting there, and it'd be raising, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, stop raising it. And we're like, we're not raising it, it's just, it's going by itself. So, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, so that was a fun one. Um, and then Okay, so Wednesday was about respecting others and trusting, so... Um, okay, so we basically just learned that day on how to respect others, and you know, even though they might be different or act different, you know, we actually really get to know like them for who they are, and take the time to get, find, figure out like, you know, their inside qualities instead of like, how they look or what they look. How, 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 how did that go? And, uh, it seems from early age you, people fall into clicks and then you're not um, the next um, Respect's vital to becoming an effective leader because you know like you need to like make sure everyone else has like an in, input and in, like what they want to say because if you just want to be like oh we're doing this and no one else is going to really want to follow you you get like you want you know the best leaders you know take um, collaboration and uh, listen to what others have to say and ideas. And we also learned that many people get their, they learn uh, respect from either their home life. So it's very challenging for if somebody is being, in your opinion, disrespectful, they think that's just normal because that's how they've grown up. That's how they've had. Um, that's how their role models have acted, is just disrespectful, but you have to take into consideration that like, <laughs> they don't think that's being disrespectful. They think that's just normal. So you just, you have to try to just step back and look at the whole picture instead of being just automatically judging them, being like, oh, well, they don't really care, they're mean, they're disrespectful. You just have to take into consideration where they've come from, their, you know, background, so. And also another thing is a lot of people judge you just on, as soon as you walk in and you see somebody, you're already making judgments. And we learned that in another activity that John will talk about. And it's just amazing how, and sometimes they aren't bad judgments, like, oh, they're really, oh, that, that guy has a suit on, he must be really professional and cool, you know, and has these cool shades. But, you know, what if he's not, what if he's a, just a, you know, he's a fun dork. He's not a cool guy. You know what I mean? So cool. Yeah. No, I'm a dork. I like being a dork. So it's just, you know, the kind of stuff. So we had three activities that day: um, spider web, blind talk, and walk the line. Okay. So the spider web was a bunch of these little elastic strings and. It, there, it was about like it started about like three feet off the ground, four feet, and then like it kind of went like this high. So then you had to get people through little holes that it made. It was kind of like a spider web without like them touching the rope, and then like no one else could like you couldn't go past like underneath it, like with, if, unless you got like through the web first. So like we couldn't have people like go back on the other side and like bring people down. Like the first person. It was like really hard, and the problem with this was like you had to, you know, like be a leader there, but like we also had to, you know, collaborate and like listen to other ideas and um, 
for what we got, like, we, we, we took us a long time, but, like, we got, we finally got it, and, um, um, some people were able to step up that, like, weren't pretty, like, nervous, and, you know, a lot of, like, some girls were, like, kind of self-conscious about themselves going through the net, and so, like, we had to respect everyone, and, you know, we were, and, like, we just, um, helped, and everyone got through, and, and before you went through, you have to say, what do I want to work on on myself? What can I change myself to make to help other people feel good about themselves? And I said, I have a lot of friends that pick on other people. And I sort of, you know, I'm like, okay, th those people are fine. You know, I'm not going to really step in. It's not my job, you know. But I realize it is my job to step in. It is my job to protect those who are being picked on. And it's not cool. Um, also, another difficulty with this challenge is we had talking chips. Everybody had three talking chips, so nobody could speak without giving up a uh, talking chip. So it was really difficult not being able to speak whenever you wanted to, um, but it also made it a little easier because nobody had to speak over each other. So, uh, Savannah and John Michael, what was your I believe we up. did um, we did two activities where we had to give up or not give up where we had to say a goal and I believe mine was um, usually I'm like I just I don't speak my opinion I just go by someone else's idea I'm like oh you know that's a good idea like I have one but theirs will probably work out better than mine so one of my goals was to just throw my idea out there because it could <clears throat> it could be better than theirs in the long run. Mm -hmm. So that was one of mine, just trying to speak out more, I guess. How about you, John Michael? Um, I remember like they asked us just a commitment on how to respect others, and I said I wanted her to respect my brother more because um, it's kind of hard to respect him a lot of the time. Because <laughs> <laughs> he like steals, he steals from me and all that. And so I just wanted to be able to... That's a universal brother. Yeah, that's a brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel the respect. The normal one. <laughs> okay, wait, and so it skipped the... Um, what was the other one? Yeah, the blind talk. Oh, the blind talk. So then um, we all went into the gym and then we all... They assigned us a random partner. And we basically, we both had blindfolds on, and we didn't know who it was we were talking to, and we just had like a 10 minute conversation with them and find out things that they like to do, and you know, who they were, and where they're from, and you know, just what their life's like at home and stuff. And then the walk the line, there's no picture for that, but we all went back like, find this big line of concrete, or I mean, like, there's like lines in the slab, and there, and there was like a line in the middle, like a little rope, and then they asked us questions like, if you've ever been made fun of for your looks, like your hair or something, step on the line. And then they just kind of built up to this, and then they're like, oh, if you've ever known anyone has committed suicide, or if you've ever had suicidal thoughts, step up to the line. And so, like, I, that got really emotional for some people. Like, they started crying, and, you know, we had, like, that Sawyer East Slick, you know, and so everyone, I mean, mostly everyone knew someone that's committed suicide, and it was just kind of a sad day, and it was, uh... And at the end, they asked the question, have you ever bullied somebody? Every single person in that camp stepped up to the line. And it was really amazing and super emotional. I'm already tearing up. Yeah. Um, to see how many people have added to that. And I'm, you know, I feel like a really good person. I have. I'm already tearing up. Sorry. <laughs> it was deep. <laughs> So. Oh, Nathan. Gosh. Okay, so Thursday was goals and decisions, and so we learned about SMART goals. So you can go to the next slide. All right, SMART goals. S, specific, and is it a stretch? So you want your goal to be achievable and specific, but you want it to be challenging. Um, is it measurable? Is it achievable? Can you get to it? Can you do it step by step? Achievable. <laughs> I've said that several times. Relevant. Is it relevant to your cause? Is it relevant to what you want to do with your life? Um, and is is it timely? Can you have? A, can you put a time set on it? Can you say I'm going to do this in two hours? Like I can get this egg across this amount of space in a, on a spoon in five minutes without dropping. 
um, challenge activities, warp speed and impossible dream. So, do you guys remember what warp speed yeah, is? Um, that was like the ball. It was like a, we had a ball, and we had to have it where like everyone touched the ball, but like you couldn't like it couldn't touch the ground, and like you couldn't touch more than once. And you know, I it was like something like that, and yeah. so like I don't know. We got and we had to make goals. Like at first, at first we were in like a big circle, and we basically like started tossing it because he just gave us like he just said he just gave us the rules, and so we didn't really know. So we, <coughs> we kind of started tossing around, and everyone touched it, and we timed it. So like, okay, we want to get this done in thirty seconds, and then we started kind of think more, um, no, uh, like more strategic, um, effect, effect, more yeah, strategic. And so like I don't know, we um we kind of thought you know like how someone holds the ball. And they like run, and like you know everyone like touches it on their hand. Everyone sticks their hand out, but like that was like because you can't have um, you can't have some like, two people touching at once. So we like I think like we we our best was like seven seconds. We stabbed ours with a pen. Like our and best. we just ran along the line, and we found out it was really hard to communicate in a line. And I don't understand yeah, why yeah, conference tables is. are in rectangles because <laughs> it's super hard to communicate. We found that out because the circle. You're able to see everybody, yeah. but in a line you have to scream down at least 30 people, <laughs> like, this is my idea, yeah. and somebody on the other side doesn't hear you, and they're saying, this is my idea, so half the group thinks one thing, and the other half doesn't. So it was, we found it was really, really I challenging. I believe they gave us talking chips for that activity also, Yeah, so. <laughs> that was another challenge. Well, not first, but like, he changed it later. And like, then, we so, either loved talking chips or we hated them. Said, yeah. like, <laughs> like before he got like fifth grade, they got like they put in like a shoe. They like took their shoe off, and put it, like in the shoe, and kind of held the shoe because they weren't touching the ball technically. So and they ran it and got in, like five seconds. Yeah. So, I got. Like, I think we got it in, like my challenge group got it in, like. I think it was, like seven or eight or something like that. No, I think it was like three. Yeah, my three challenge seconds. group got in, like thirty seconds. We got like. Seven. We didn't think <laughs> outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this next challenge we had the impossible dream. And what we had to do is we had to suspend somebody from a harness, and we were holding the rope on this one. One of the sides of the rope was uh, tied to a tree. My challenge group didn't have that. We had to actually hold the rope on both sides. Um, and we had to suspend our smallest person, who was Danny. I loved him dearly. Um, and we, this is a volcano, and we had to get the egg in the middle right there. And we couldn't touch the inside of the volcano, otherwise we would die. The trees actually didn't really help though at all because we still they sag too much, so we actually still have to live. Well, yeah, because they're climbing ropes, so they're stretchy. Yeah. So um, he's wearing his fire protective gear, so he doesn't get burned or anything, and he has to scooch himself out on this little line, and he has to reach back, and he manages to lose his arm because he's super low. He's like this far away from the ground when he's trying to grab the egg, so he loses an arm, so he doesn't have an arm anymore. He loses a leg, so he doesn't have a leg anymore. So he has, he's hanging on to the rope by one arm and one leg. Um, or no, he had two legs on. So he uses this arm, his dead arm, to hang onto the rope, and he grabs the egg. And we're like, yeah, and he has to scoop back it outside the circle where we're still holding. I'm on the back, just literally sitting like this. What? <laughs> just sitting. And um, afterwards, we sat around the circle, and he's like, did you make a goal? Like, how did you figure this out? How did you make this goal? And we're like, we want to do this in 20 minutes, and we want Danny to be able to go into the middle, grab the egg without, you know, doing a couple of tries. We want to do the first try. And we did, and we did it in under 20 minutes. We did it in like 15, I think. So five minutes to spare. We did pretty good. Um, yeah. Okay, and um, <coughs> our group, like, our problem was we got, I mean, we got it so quick. Like, we got, she got down there. That's uh, Ernest right there, and uh, she was able to grab the egg and we scoot back. The thing was, we kind of, we like fought for quite a while and weren't really, um, we kind of <laughs> argued about like, we were arguing about like, you know, what which we should do with the ropes and like, you know, we, there was too much tension on one side and we couldn't, you know, get a knot down and we kind of argued. So, like, but once we got that, I mean, we, could, we got it in like, I think like 11 minutes, but we probably, could, we, if we didn't do all that arguing, we probably could have got it in like seven. Yeah. So. Um, and then afterwards, we circled around the, um, we the sat around the lava. Um, I'm surprised we didn't burn to death. Um, but we all, they asked us, what is your goal for life? In 10 years, what do you want? My goal was, I wanted a good job that I was happy in. I wanted a husband. I wanted kids. I wanted a good house. And I want somewhere beautiful to live. 
<laughs> All in 10 years? <laughs> All in 10 years. <laughs> What's going to happen in 20? <laughs> Is this a realistic, attainable goal? <laughs> uh, well, yes. we'll see. It is. <laughs> And well, it wasn't 10 years, it was like, what do you want to happen in your oh, life? It wasn't like a time span, but... They, and they, they also asked us, if you had the option of your dream just given to you, would you do it, or would you want to take, you know, the harder route and, like, actually work for it? And so, I think I was the only one that said I want to take the harder one, you know, and not just, yeah, there's only, like... Maybe four of us out of like the majority are great. thirty the kids. Really? Yeah. Everyone's like, no, I just want my dream. I was like, no. I, 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 <laughs> we had two different challenge, or was it three? Three. No, challenge, three. Another four. Four challenge. different challenge groups. So we were all in each different cha challenge group. So every activity was really different for each one of us because we did have different people. Everyone in my group said that was the journey. That's funny. I know. I, know. I didn't understand. Mostly, but. I, mostly, everyone in our group wanted it like. It, it was, we didn't, they didn't ask it like that. They had like, if you could like, if you could like make sure, like not like given to you, but like if you could like know for sure that you were gonna like, get that. You could have a guarantee like, that you would get it no matter what, would you want it? And like most people said, yeah, I didn't say I wanted to guarantee it, but a lot of people did, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Friday. Okay. <laughs> so Friday, we, the topic was make a difference. Um, so the pitch, all week we, our species group, were organizing this, um, like a, well it's a pitch, so it's like to like a business company that we, my species group was, we wanted to create an after school program that way kids of you know, our community would have some place safe to go after school because a lot of kids either to go home, or some kids don't have a home, or they you know, go and do illegal substances for fun. So that was our pitch, and so we had to practice, and we had to create PowerPoint, and at, on Friday, we had to give our pitch in front of all of Ryla, and we had to dress in our nice business attire, and we, we, we did pretty well. Um, we had three judges that were judging our pitch, and they later gave us um, their opinion on how we did, and could show us better ways that we could improve it, and they asked us questions like, why did you say this, or why, why did you think this? So we just had to you know, su support our idea with facts and opinions, and Yes, we were asking the Rotary to help sponsor us through our pitch idea, and so we all sat up in a line and went up to the podium each and talked about it to the judges. So there was a representative for each species speaking? Uh, no, we all represented. Um, we didn't really have a specific leader person. We just all each had to talk at least once, so that wasn't really a problem. But we all got up there and talked about stuff. And then all the fun. This is like the campfire moment. Sure. No, but okay. yeah, the pitch was oh, a huge okay. deal. Yeah, it was every, there were some kids that were very, very nervous about it. Like, they were, you know, just back there, like, shaking their foot and, like, fiddling. I don't want to talk. Yeah. There's, like, 140 kids and a lot of adults standing up in the back, so. Yeah. What? There were, like, 300. 300? No, it was 140 kids. Uh, okay, I thought it was more. <laughs> it looked like it. It looked like it. Yeah, yeah, it was, like, And it was just this whole gymnasium full of kids, and we're like, I need to go to the bathroom. What? Yeah, just everyone's making excuses, you know. They're like, just, I, I don't know if uh, I can do it. But <laughs> once we did it, everyone, you know, was proud of themselves for going up there, despite their fears and just, just talking in front of everybody. Okay, yeah. So all the fun stuff. Um. Oh. Okay. So that kind of thing. That was skits. We did a lot. Of, the first day we did a lot of skits, and it was related to like our species. So all the animals, like. <laughs> I think ours, I, I can't remember, some people did like, the frogs did like, yeah. it's like the magic, the, the prince and the frogs, frog. the the frog. I don't know. But <laughs> they did, there were some funny ones, there was like, the, so the guys, the owls, they were, they were did that, the, the song by the hood, they were like, who are we? Who that was, that was us, by the way. And we were awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We were awesome. Many who songs. I can't, I can't remember. That involved. Ours, but yeah, there was skits. Oh, those were fun. And then, more skits. 
Um, there was free time. There was um, there's like the what um the creek or the river or whatever. I didn't. It was, it was cold. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. Um, cold. this was like called your um. It was right at the beginning when we all got there. It was called like your uh, the run. <laughs> the run, the run right, runway. Right yeah. runway. So they they just played like a song. Like all the counselors, the assistant counselors, and the counselors had their own personal ones that went at a time, but then everyone else could do them. And so you basically just dance all the way down the line, kind of. So I don't know. Next. Song. And it was the challenge was who could um, do the weirdest dance. So there was a lot of every night we went and went to the pal the. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and there was um, lots of skits. The counselors did lots of skits, and they like impersonated each other. That was kind of funny. Like the assistant counselors always made fun of the counselors, and the counselors always made fun of the assistant counselors. And every night you had an option to <laughs> show talent. Yeah. This is my Brett. assistant counselor Brett. He's saying Lady Gaga hair. <laughs> and um. I thought it was Diane. <laughs> yeah. You had, costume. you had to. Um, there's every single night you had the option of showing a talent. So a lot of people went up and a lot of guys sang with their guitar and a lot of people did stuff they were really afraid to do. And the outstanding, I sang yeah. Um, the outstanding thing was after every single performance, whether it was average or phenomenal, everybody stood up and did a stand, standing ovation and just made everybody just feel. Awesome about themselves, and I thought that was really, really good. Um, so these are more skits, I guess, or some. And then the people did other things, like I don't know. Some people made that, like some counselors made their own skits, and it was just kind of fun. And so I guess that's. Probably yeah, that was it for the pictures. Next page. Um. um oh. Okay, so. Oh, I guess you're just asking questions. Uh, what did the letters say? What did the answer say? <laughs> <laughs> Rotary Youth Leadership and they also, Academy. It is a slight thing to say it, but actually they emphasize the four-way test a lot too. The, is it true? Is it the truth? Is it fair off concern? Is it beneficial to all? Four-way test. Yeah. Right. Four -way There's one more. Uh, is it build better relationships? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Australia, 1959. Wow. Okay, so that's basically it. And yes, in District 5110, everybody who's going to be a junior is recommended to be a Ryla camper. I would recommend it to everybody who asks about it, even if they don't ask about it. So, like, <laughs> no, like, you do yeah. need to apply to this. It's life changing, and yeah, it's amazing. And it was just, and it was really sad. Like you know, the last day we all kind of did some like. We had these balloons and like we like wrote little slips of paper to everyone and we kind of just put them in their like balloon. And, I don't know, just said saying bye to everyone. And then we did one final like species runway where like we had a lion and we were in the grass and like we all had to choose our song. And then we all did this little dance and it was like right before we got on the bus and it was kind of sad saying bye to everyone. And in the balloon, everybody. So we had we passed around pieces of paper and everybody had to write something they really respected about the person in the group. So we had a total of like. 12, 15, like, 12, like 15 like little things in this balloon, and the balloon wasn't blown up. And they said, when you're feeling low and you're feeling like you aren't good enough, blow up this balloon and pop it. Pop it right. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> I just and like, pop it and read the things that they said about you, you know. And that has made a difference for a lot of people. A lot of people have been in really, really low spots in their lives, and they pop that balloon and it just feels so much better. Like in really bad times too, and it's just cool. So that's it. I guess. Yeah, it was in it was near Cottage Grove. Um, it's not, it was like yeah. 20 miles from Cottage Grove. So. Yeah. 144 oh, yeah. students attended Ryla, and the cost <coughs> for each um, sponsor to sponsor the kid <laughs> is $500. It's uh, it just went up to 550. It's still worth it. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, twice the cost. You bet. Oh yeah, that's your start. We took that at the very first day, but yeah, that was just our, that was everyone, right? all the counselors, and and then there was like some like coordinators. There was these, there were four coordinators that were like they planned all the challenge activities. And that was Brad, David, um, Ross, and um, Dylan. And then there were like the guys. There was like Sheriff Tom, and he was like the owner of the camp. And, Sheriff Tom. Sheriff Tom. Sheriff Tom. Yeah, he would come on. To, he came onto the bus first day. He had the little best little sheriff badge and a hat, and he's like, "I'm Sheriff Tom, not really a sheriff, but 
have a great time, and I'm going to be the guy that's with the rules. And there's Ross the Boss, who also applies the rules. Um, but yeah, Sheriff Tom is really cool. <laughs> So is there anybody that, yeah, there's yes, gonna be questions. Questions. that failed or freaked out and wanted to go home along? Um, I mean, I had some people homesick, but it wasn't like, I really want to leave, I can't take this anymore. Um, a couple of girls got sick, but nobody really left except for the assisting counselor. Um, and I think everybody had a blast. Yeah. I think there's one out of... How many speech groups did we have? Like 12? Uh, yeah, there was 12. Yeah, yeah 12 speech groups. One didn't and 12 perform groups. very well, and they were storming a lot the whole entire camp. So it wasn't the best experience for that species group. But honestly, most of the time, it's an outstanding experience. And I would go back to her. Yeah. I miss it so much. <laughs> Will you come back as an assistant counselor? Yes. This year at camp was, was interesting. Uh, the class of 2010. Um, the rule is after you're out of Ryla or out of high school for one year, you can apply to be an assistant counselor. So almost every one of our assistant counselors, 2010, they kept cheering for that. That was the year that they'd all been there and they couldn't wait to come back. And a lot of the counselors have been assistants and have been at Ryla as well. So they kind of move up. And, and the counselors, the assistants, the facilitators, a lot of those people have been coming back for years. And many of them are teachers or counselors, and they say by by June the teachers are pretty beat up and tired, and they don't want to deal with kids too much anymore. And then they get to Ryla, it energizes them again for the next yes. year. And they're excited. A lot of the assistant counselors, they were all like college, because um, my assistant counselor Cole, because like we had different like nobody in the species group was from the same city, and no one in the same. Um, Cabin was from the same city, so you were like everyone. You know, you were you were not with the same people ever. Yeah, whole time. you. I never saw this too. You know, like, ever except for like free meals. time. Like we at free time, we didn't see that. But like you know, we we played this thing called Quidditch. It's kind of like a Harry Potter game. And, yes. And uh, there was like captured the flag and uh, we played awesome. football and you know you could ride your bike around. Uh, there was bikes you could ride down the road and all that. So it was and there was a lot of, and then. Yeah, a lot of counselors might went to OSU, Oregon State University, and there was a lot from University of Oregon, so a lot of just college level guys doing counseling and stuff. Any more questions or comments? <coughs> yes. Uh, John Michael, what's the what's the one thing you brought home with you? I mean, you know, what did you really take away from that? Um, that I need, like, um, a lot of time, you know, like kind of what Haley said about, like, you're just kind of standing by, you know, watching people get, uh, like, picked on or, like, you know, made fun of, but it, even though it seems to you know it might be funny, like, even though it just is something small, but it might be, like, you know, it might really hurt them inside, even though they might not show it. And so you really need to, like, kind of step up and say, hey, that's not cool, just leave them alone. Or... Have you found yourself in that situation since you've been back from Ryla where you've noticeably went, this is the moment to stand up? And you did it. Good for you. Yeah. How about the rest of you? What did you come away with? The most important thing you you think you um, the picking one was really big for me. Um, let's see. I came away with a lot, honestly. I I've been here my whole entire life and I've known the same group of people. So it was really different to go into a completely unfamiliar environment with completely unfamiliar people and have a chance to actually try to lead. Because here, we sort of already have established leaders in our class and in our sports teams, and you don't really get a chance to try. And there I got to try, and I'm like, wow, I can be a leader, and I can do that. And I think that really gave me the confidence of who I am, and um, it really made me believe in myself. It really picked up my self-esteem. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> what do you, did it change your plans for the future to, or cement them more like going to college? Were you iffy and are you, did that make a decision for you? Yeah, they're all college bound. Um, oh yeah, I'm definitely college bound for sure. <laughs> but it really helped me with my um, <clears throat> job decision. Um, the pitch, I really like talking in front of people and presenting ideas, as you can probably tell, I like talking. Um, 
And I'm like, I sort of want to go into business, I think. And I sort of want to pitch ideas. But I also like the manipulation behind marketing. <laughs> Business Let me smart. see. Uh, how yeah. about you, Savannah? About my about the change. What change oh, you want okay. to bring home? I want to hear. I well, one of my goals <laughs> I remembered was not to um, not to just automatically judge people or assume what they must be by like the way they look or the way they talk. Like actually get to know them on a personal basis because at such a small high school, if you hear something about somebody, most kids, you know, just automatically assume like, oh, well, I'm not going to talk to them or hang out with them. So I personally make an effort to, you know, smile at everybody, to say hi to everybody. Like our FFA and Interact meetings, I like to just, you know, say hi to everybody. That way they all feel welcome and that, you know, they are, you know, welcome. But yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's